what's the vibe like in, in LA these days? Uh, it's better. It's yeah. um, not as hectic and um, and just, uh, you know, you just got to be careful, man. You got to keep a mask on and keep washing your hands and stuff. But um, yeah. it was pretty bad. A couple, two or three weeks ago, there was like, there was no room in the hospitals. Um, so people were like, the, being, people were going in an ambulance to the hospital and they would be like, do you have any room? And like, no, sorry, you got to go to another hospital. So it was bad, but it's, um, thank, thankfully it's gotten uh, a bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good news. Uh, things are pretty, pretty mellow here these days, but we have one case that everybody's freaking out about, <laughs> you know, where it came in from out of the country and they're all tracking it down and blah, blah, blah. But that's yeah. a good place to be. Yeah, it was, it was definitely, um, you know, it's pretty scary for a while. And when you start looking at the numbers, like every day, there'd be like, you know, thousands of people dying every day. It was crazy. Yep. And I know yep. you guys were definitely, um, it, you know, it's much sheltered there and your government's done really well. So and it helps being on an island. Isolation. That's right true. There. <laughs> There's a lot of sharks around the island. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there have been a few attacks the, the summertime. So it's been, I, I know. Sharks have been hungry, but there you go. <laughs> so how are you feeling about putting the record out at this time? feeling good finally it's been a long a long wait it was like 2020 just kind of flew past you know it's like almost like i mean i'm sitting here right now talking to you when i should have been doing this a year ago right and it just flew by i i just feel like we jumped we skipped a year but at the same time it's very bizarre because um it felt like every day took forever to get through and 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 it was like walking through quicksand every yeah. day it was like like you know so i'm glad that we're finally here yeah 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 because the the record was finished and ready to go a year ago right yeah yeah we finished before the pandemic started and we um and we we got uh about two about a month away from the release and that's when it was like all hell broke loose yeah and of course, with the type of music this is, this is the, this is begging to be played in front of real people by real people. So it, you still can't do yes. that as much as you want to. Not, not yet. We did, we did have an opportunity to get together and play together in October. Right. And it was, it was amazing. We had a, it was the songs even more so really, they come alive not no pun intended because we have a song called come alive but <laughs> right <laughs> they really it's like it's so intense you know when you, when you're making a record sometimes you you make it you're not really sure exactly how it's going to turn out but you you do your best at that time but then later when you've had a chance to absorb it and like own it even more yeah it's it, it, it's it's like it's like set on fire it's great yeah a little distance is good perspective sometime and you kind of yeah let other things happen yeah we will on. we we'll get there you know we don't know when we're going to play but um i hope hopefully we'll start rehearsals on uh on like um maybe march i hope yeah we're talking about so uh, we'll say that uh, just to, as a bit of uh trivia that here new zealanders will be aware of the band because john stevens was an original member of it who was a kiwi mm -hmm. and uh, of course the band has gone through lots of changes so uh, it's kind of part of what the band's all about. So um, you've been a fairly steady member of the group. And of course, now you got Glenn Hughes in there wailing away, which is awesome. So, uh, yeah. so tell me about how you would adapt with the changes in the lineup. Um, I, as you get older, well, I, th originally the band was, was told, they told me that this was a, a, a collective, you know, it's bring, people bring in their music and they come in and they play for a while and they, you know, and they, they move on or, or the band moves in a different direction. And um, we got to be a pretty steady, actually prior to my being there, there was a pretty steady lineup with Richard Fortas and Dizzy. And then I came in uh, and it, and it, I think it's, it even got a little more steady with the exception of drummers. Right. Um, we just had a couple, couple drummers, but um, then, um, you know, change happens. It's inevitable. And when, we we were looking to see who we would get to come in. Um, management called called me and said, "We're talking to Glenn. What do you think?" And I was like, 
that's amazing. I, I, why didn't I think of that? Because you know? right. I've, I've known Glenn for years and we've been, we've been really good mates and uh, been, you know, we, Glenn and I were both pallbearers at Ronnie James Dio's funeral, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, I said, that would be an amazing change. That, you know, if you're going to make a change, make a change. You know, don't try and replace somebody with, with you know, you can't really do that anyway. Yep. It's like, uh, you got to let the new person be who he is. And Glenn's um, a very strong will, very strong. He's got a definite thing to him. And yeah. I thought that's going to be really interesting. And and initially, a lot of people were like, you know, I don't see that happening or, or something. But um, it's just with the with this opportunity that we got to, to go and record in south of France and basically live together. Right. We... Um, we really, everybody got comfortable with each other. Everybody worked hard on everybody's music ideas and songs. Um, Glenn brought some really cool, really killer songs in. Um, we then, when when Glenn um, was going to be the singer, then I, I from, for myself and for David, we would both be thinking about how would Glenn, what about this? I think Glenn might like this. Or, you know, we were yeah. writing for him. Right, right. So... It gave us a, it gave us when Glenn signed on, it gave us a, uh, you know, a goal and, and something that, that we could like think like I, there was a couple of songs where I thought, I know Glenn's going to dig this. And, or, <laughs> but I, I would, be, but I'd be also like, I wouldn't be precious about it. I'd be like, you know, I'm going to present it. And if, it, if he gets off on it, then cool. We'll help. We'll, we'll, we'll work on it. If he doesn't, then I got other ideas and he's got ideas and David's got ideas. So but the singer's got to be into it. Glenn's a soulful cat and yeah. he needs to, he needs to feel it. If he doesn't feel it, it, it ain't going to work. Yeah. And man, he has some pipes, doesn't he? I mean, he just that first track he's, and it's just like, Whoa, there he is. He's got pipes and he is, um, he's, his bass is ferocious. His bass yeah. playing is, is insane. Ferocious. Is that your cat bothering you? That's my dog. She's oh, your dog. <laughs> she, she is. She's. Uh, I've got a daughter that's five and a puppy that's ten months, and man, they keep. You know, I was. I was. You know, it's been really bizarre, Marty. This whole thing of working at home. I've never worked that much at home. I would go in my studio and write songs or something or do a session, but nobody would bother me in there. But now. Um, with COVID, everybody's everywhere, and we're, yeah. we're trying to work, and I'm babysitting, and I got a puppy that I, I thought it'd be a great idea to get a puppy during COVID, and then I realized, oh my God, it's a puppy! It's everyone, <laughs> everything's getting eaten. <laughs> oh man! But, um, but anyway, we, you know, um, we've been really lucky with this with this whole process, and a lot of people have not been. They've had a really really rough time of it during this COVID. So you know. Yep. We definitely can't complain. We had to wait a little while, but finally it's here. And and uh, we just hope people like it. And hopefully it'll make some people forget about, you know, life for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you mentioned the drumming situation in the band. And, of course, that's still kind of in a state of flux even now. You just, uh, Dean quit and you've got Tommy on board. And that was like happening the day after the record came out. So what was going on? Yeah, it was What's happening? What the hell is going on? <laughs> no, no, it's um, it's actually uh, it's all amicable. You know, we're at the age where we support each other. You know, right. if somebody wants to do something, then by all means. I mean, Dean, Dean played his butt off, and he he's really proud of what he did on the record. But I think he he wasn't feeling his best um, last last year. He was going, you know, being off the road for so long was I think was difficult and. He had some, um, he's got some back issues that were bugging him. Right. We, when we got together and played in, in October, he was really having a hard time of it. So he kept trying to get an operation and he couldn't because of COVID, you know? And so then it's, I, I think things just got to the point where he um, was thinking about, let's just, I'm going to do it this year. And so hope, and he, I think he did actually get the operation. I got to check with him, but he also had a, he, he got a, a gig on the side that he'd been working on um, and he, where he was singing more. And I think he, he was excited about that. So right. We, right, right. we definitely wish, wish him the best of luck. And um, 
you know, but we're super excited about Tommy Clefetto's coming in. Yeah, yeah. Tommy's a pow- he's a powerhouse. We saw you know, him with Black um, Sabbath here a few years ago. Uh, Tommy's Tommy is um, these guys are all you know. I mean, it's like Brian Tishy, Dean Castronova, Tommy Clefetto's. I mean, these guys are the best in in the world right now. You know, yep, Tommy's yep. like he's the guy. So um, it was fortunate that he had had some. Um, he had had some uh, relationship with the dead daisies in the past where he, I think he filled in for Brian Tishy on some stuff. Right. And they, so when the, the issue started to come up, it was like, we should get Tommy, if, see what Tommy's doing, you know, and Tommy was excited about it. I think he, he's, you know, Tommy and I talked, I, I'm very excited to play with him and I'm really excited to hear him and, um, and Glenn groove together, you know? Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, puppy opened the right. door. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned that uh, the Dean is off on and wants to do a little singing. He sings one tune on the album, his version of 30 Days in the Hole, the old humble pie. Yeah, they they did a kind of a duet actually on that too. Um, yeah, that was just that was why one of the reasons he did that was to, to give Dean an opportunity to sing. Um, he's got a killer voice, you know. He's he's one. He's like Glenn. He's he's great at two things. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just a I, I'm a jack of one trade. I I do what I do, and that's it. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm always help. I'm always glad to help out in any way I can do it. But guitar is the thing, you know, for yeah. me. But Dean uh, sang really well on that song, and Glenn sang with them, and and uh, I, I I really like the version. I th- I think it's something good, you know, that we can we can play and be proud of how we we changed it up. It's not exactly like the yeah original. yeah yeah. Well, speaking of guitar, the tune before uh, Thirty Days in a Hole is a thing called Unspoken, and there's some wicked guitar playing on that. So, oh, when, thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so, when you're when you're going in, you're in the studio. What's your process about a, approaching a track like that and and making and creating a performance? I just try to play the best for the song. Like, what right. does the song need? And I tried a couple different, um, couple different things. Um, uh, like the, the song itself is pretty simple, but I love the, you know, it's a very, it's, it's almost got like a, a little bit of the who on the front end, or uh, you know, it's, it's got this impact, and then it, it kind of settles down into the right. song, and then the solo comes and it kind of just busts out you know, into this. <laughs> yeah this thing um it's not it's not um i wouldn't say it's like the it's super fiery but it's got a good soul to it um so i think playing for the song is what i try to do always you know it there were some songs where um i i experimented you know i would like i would tell like 30 days in the hole is an example yep when i was recording my guitar I, I, tr- I first did it with a, an open G tuning kind of similar to what the original was, but it just sounded too similar to the original. Right. Um, and then I, um, I got stuck. I was confused what to do. So I s- said to the guys, come in, let me show you what I'm doing, get some opinions going. Cause I really, you know, I want it to be right. And so I, I said, I could do this way. Or I could do that way. And they, they said, you know, no, that simpler way you're playing it is really cool. And it's a little heavier. And yeah. that suits that suits the band, and we. Um, so, in those situations, I, I'll get some advice from people I trust. Uh, other times, I would just I knew like Holy Ground, for example. Um, when Glenn brought that song in, I could I knew what I wanted to do to it. But when we first recorded it, I kind of just did it the way that he would, had laid it out. Right. But later, later I I you know respectfully took some liberties to to you know 
change a few little bits here and there. And and um, I think it suited the song in a good way. It was actually, we weren't sure if that song was gonna, gonna actually, we weren't sure if it was gonna make it on the album, but then after we, we all worked together hard on it, it turned into such a kick-ass track. The management said, that's the, not only are we gonna open with that track, but that's the title track of the album. Right. <laughs> But sometimes the producer would come to me, like I was doing solos and um, uh, Ben Gross did such a great job. He was so, he's funny because he's like really calm all the time. And I'd be like, I go, I play a solo. I'm like, Ben, what do you think about that? And he goes, mm, it's all right. I mean, not, I mean, I like the end. I'm like, okay. So I'd do another one, something different. Right. And, and, it, and then he'd be, and then Glenn would go, yeah, 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 that's awesome. And then I'd go, Ben, what do you think? And he'd be like, I mean, the front of it I like, but <laughs> I go, okay, well, I'm going to, I go, okay, let me start with that it's front and then I'll right. do the end of before and I'll try and figure the part that Glenn likes, figure, figure, try that. And I'd put it, do it and I'd be like, Ben, what do you think? And he'd be like, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's, you know, maybe keep, keep trying. I'm like, come on, man, I want this. I'd be like, I want this solo to start off with a really strong melody, and then I want it to go to this really uh, crazy noise, and I want to end it with this fire, you know? Yeah. And he turned, he just, he turned around and looked at me, he'd be like, well, "What do you do? What do you, what do you mess around? Just do it." I'm like, yeah. "Ah, okay." You know? So then I would, <laughs> then I would, I'd be, I'd be like really inspired, like I'm, I know now I'm gonna do what I want to do, and I'd do something, I'd be like well, sorry, that was crap. And he'd be like, no, 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 that was really good. You know, and I'm like, I, I'd be like, you're killing me. We, I can't, I can't read you, you know? And he's like, that, that was really good. And I'd be like, well, listen, the end's all screwed up. He goes, well, fix it. And so I fixed it. And then we got the solo done, you know, it was just, it, it was, it was just a funny session. And then sometimes, you know, I'd get lucky and do something and everyone would be like, yeah, that's great. Other times, it, it, you know, I'd get stuck. Another solo that I, uh, come alive is a melodic solo it's just it's just a melody that i had in my head and yep. i was hoping that it was going to work out but it, it was going to depend on on glenn's vocal if it worked out the melody and right. fortunately it did but you you know you have to because you have to when when i'm doing a solo i want to hear the song from start to finish and then i want to see how the vocal ends up how it goes into the solo if there's a solo needed maybe not but if he's if he's ending on a high energy note that I need to either come in underneath that or come in above it or, you know, so, but that solo worked out and I had the melody. It was like four notes, five right. notes. And then I wasn't sure what to do on the second half. And I was kind of like, what do you think guys? And Glenn's manager said, well, Doug, that melody is so good. You could play it twice. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. why didn't I think of that? <laughs> No. Well, it leads so, me to ask a question with different vocalists do you have to approach your guitar playing differently to a, to go get in sync with what he's doing vocally um somewhat i mean you know a little bit i mean it's all kind of classic hard rock blues based hard rock but um yeah yeah it definitely you know, is that um <laughs> i i basically uh, Glenn really want you know he he really loves melody and and um it's not as much about the fire the right. fire you know fire playing um uh, so this album you know I took that as a I took that as a as an inspiration that I wanted to it's kind of a less is more album in some ways for guitar you know right uh it's, it's got really cool riffs and it's got cool solos and whatever but um this is not, you know, Van Halen one. This is the Dead Daisies Holy Ground. It's something totally different. Yeah. And the the vibe is 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 just a, a little more chill. I think it's 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 um a, a melod a heavy melodic record. Yeah. Cool. Cool. With, Very good. So proof. it's been uh, at least a year, probably a lot longer since you guys recorded this. Have Have you got plans for what's up next? Because Everybody's been sitting around doing twiddling their thumbs for a year. We've been somehow, like I said, we've been really busy, although it's, it doesn't seem so, but we, we have, uh, Glenn and I got together and did some work on some new songs um, just for fun, to keep us occupied. Right. 
and uh that was that's been really good we've got a good start on, a, on another record actually so cool. maybe we will um we'll, we'll get to work on some of that stuff later this year but primarily we want to be out we want to be one of the first bands out there playing as soon as sure. possible yeah well you can start down here <laughs> if you can get into the country and play. <laughs> i've only been i've only been there once and it was insane um wellington area i guess it was called right wellington. yeah wellington's the yeah. capital down south yep yep in the middle yep. of the so we um i enjoyed myself there i, I went there with white snake we had um three or four days off prior to the gig and uh, I just sat in my room and practiced guitar, looking out over this beautiful country. You know, it's amazing. Yep. Um, but yeah, I'd love to come back with the daisies. That would be fantastic. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed that every, it sounds like things are getting a little better in the States. They are. They're getting, well, you know, knock on wood. Um, <laughs> yeah. We are doing much better in California and in other parts of the state and other parts of the country. But um you know, we still have a ways to go. We got to, we got to, you know, keep the masks going and get yep. vaccinated as soon as possible. Yep. But I think once the vac vaccinations start catching up and people are still recovering so much, I mean, there's so many people that have been sick um, that I think that we will get, uh, it'll go away rapidly when it starts, you know, once we get to, to a, a little bit of a herd immunity and then also the vac vaccines um, are rolled out to everybody. Right. Excellent. So, well, in the meantime, hang in there. <laughs> absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to keep hanging and uh, all the best <laughs> to you guys. Thank you so much, Marty, for, for hanging with me. Thank you. And, it's uh, been a pleasure. Believe me. And thanks for the stay, record. So I think people are going to, we'll, they're going to dig it. I mean, you need loud rock and roll at a time like this. My God. There's no replacement. There is no replacement for, for classic loud rock and roll. You need it. It's yep. essential. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. All right, my friend. Thank, Thank you, you very much. so Have much. Have a good day. You too, bro. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.